Hello everyone. In this video lecture, we are going to talk about <clears throat> tension and friction. Uh, well, that's the famous uh, tug of war play, the tug of war game that you normally must have played, all of you must have played. So here we are, I'm taking the case of two blocks, one kg and two kg, and that is connected by an ideal string. Now when I say ideal string or ideal rope, then remember that it has a certain feature like an ideal rope doesn't have mass or it is very very light its mass is considered negligible and the tension is same everywhere the tension uh, in the rope or in the string is same everywhere and the string is inextensible it is inextensible these are the features of a rope now if in a problem there is no information about the rope or the string is given then you assume it to be an, an ideal rope of course if there is uh, the string has mass then uh, and uh, mass then it's a normal normal string and in that case the tension at every point will not be same but for the time being the situation that i am taking i'm not giving you any information about the rope that is connecting the two blocks so i can assume very well that it is an ideal rope i will call it rope i'll call it a string it's one and the same thing now what is what you notice here that I am giving two coefficients of friction for the blue box that is 0.6 between the box and the surface and 0.5 between the red box and the surface. Now when only one coefficient of friction is given then you assume that mu s is equal to mu k. The coefficient of static friction is equal to coefficient of kinetic friction and in that case the maximum static friction actually is the kinetic friction actually is the kinetic friction. So here we are. Now I am applying a force of 5 Newton to the right on the block number 2 and a force that is a function of time. That is a function of time. So it will vary with time. This is constant. This will vary with time and I am giving it the function 4T. I am asking you to find the tension and the friction on the block. The tension in the rope and the friction uh, between the block and the surface when time is 0 second, 2 second, 4 second and six seconds so we'll take four cases let's start one by one first of all when t is equal to zero second when t is zero then that means of course uh, that uh, the force here is zero and the only tracting force is five newton to the right so here we are first of all let me calculate the maximum static friction on both the blocks so fs 1m six upon ten look at this six point six so six upon ten into n one n1 is 10 so that makes 6 newton and that is equal to fk1 i have already told you that then fs2m is friction coefficient 5 upon 10 into n2 n2 is 20 so that makes 10 so total maximum opposing force will become 6 plus 10 that is 16 newton so unless the resultant tracting force is 16 newton the system will not move so here we are when t is 0 when t is 0 then i look at the free body diagram 1 kg weight down n1 f1 the force on this one the applied force on this one is 0 coefficient of friction is 0 0.6 on 2 and the tension pulls so tension here 2 kg 20 newton n2 up and the force f2 to the right tension pulls tension is always a pulling force so it will pull the block to the left now let's see let me first of all see for the tracting force and whether the system will move. 6 Newton plus 10 Newton makes 16 Newton and the resultant tracting force is 5 minus 0. That is 5 which is less than 16. So acceleration is going to be 0. System is not going to move. System is not going to move. When system is not going to move, then let me first of all check the motion of this block. 5 Newton and uh, this 5 newton is first of all opposed by the friction the friction would be static and 5 newton is a very valid static friction because the static friction on this can maximum be up to 10 so to counter 5 newton it will borrow 5 newton from the friction bank and 5 newton balances 5 newton so tension would be zero if tension is zero here then tension is zero here also if tension is zero the friction here also would be zero the problem is solved so axel in the first case acceleration is zero 
the friction force, the tension is zero in the rope and the friction force on the block 2 is 5 Newton to the left and on the block 1 there is no friction. Over. Now let us come to the situation second. 2. When T is 2 second then F1 is 4 into 2 that becomes 8 Newton. F2 is 5 Newton. So that means the resultant tracting is 8 minus 5 that is 3 Newton to the left. When it is 3 Newton to the left I first investigate the block number 1. For the block number 1 10 Newton weight down N1 up 8 Newton is here. Now 8 Newton has to be acceleration has to be 0 because 3 Newton is much less than 16 Newton. So acceleration is 0 that means static friction will act on both the blocks. If this is 8 Newton while it goes to the friction bank it, it has maximum 6 it will take all the 6 but 6 can't counter 8 so balance 2 Newton is the tension. Now if 2 Newton is the tension on this side then 2 Newton tension pulls on the block 2, 2 Newton tension is on the left here. On the block 2, 5 Newton is already acting. So now 5 Newton has to be counterbalanced because acceleration is 0. So 2 Newton is the tension. So 3 Newton will be the static friction on the block. So in this case, acceleration is 0. The friction on the first block is 6 Newton to the right and on the second block is 3 Newton to the left. Keep on observing the direction of the frictions, how it will change in each case. Now let us see, when T is 4 second, then F1 is 16 Newton, 16, so the resultant tracting is 16 minus 5 that is 11 Newton to the left, but it is still less than 16 Newton, so acceleration would be 0. Again acceleration is 0 means static friction will act on both the blocks. Once again the resultant tracting is to the left. So let's start with the block 1. 10 Newton down, N1 up, 16 Newton here. 16 Newton has to be now balanced. It will take 6 Newton from its friction bank and the balance 10 Newton is the tension. 10 Newton is the tension. Now let's come to the block 2. 10 Newton is the tension. 5 Newton is already acting to the right. That means to, to balance 10 Newton, friction on the 2 will become 5 Newton to the right. See that beauty. Here friction on 2 was 3 Newton to the left. Ha, this becomes 5 Newton to the right, to the right. Now let me take the fourth case. Let me take the fourth case when t is equal to 6 second. Then F1 becomes 24 Newton and the resultant tracting F is 24 minus 5 that is 19 Newton to the left, 19 Newton to the left. Now this is more than 16 Newton. So now system will slide, system will slide. So there would be kinetic friction on both. But the kinetic friction in this scenario is same as the maximum static. So here it is acceleration to the left. Now how much is acceleration? It will be 19 resultant tracting minus FK1 minus FK2. But FK1 and FK2 is same as FS1M and FS2M. So that will be total 16 here. So 19 minus 16, 19 minus 6 minus 10 divided by 3. So 1 meter per second square to the left. So the acceleration is 1 meter per second square to the left. Once I have found the acceleration, now let me find the tension. Friction we already know. On both the blocks, the frictions are the acting that is FK1 and FK2. Now to find the tension, let me now see. So I need some space on the board. I remove this and I come over here. I draw the free body diagram. So once again, on the block one, on the block one. So this is 10 Newton. This is a block one. This is N1. This was now, this was now uh, 24 Newton. This is 24 Newton. 24 Newton now 24 Newton and the acceleration here acceleration is 1 meter per second square 1 meter per second square so in this case if this is 24 Newton this will be FK1 and FK1 I have already told you it will be same as FS1M so that will be 6 Newton here 6 Newton here tension would act here this would be the tension now I apply the Newton law to this block and let's see what I get I apply the neutral law, so that is 1 kg, 
so 1 into acceleration 1 into 1 is equal to 24 24 minus 6 minus t minus t minus t so that that gives me 1 is equal to 24 minus 6 18 minus t so t is equal to 17 newton so t will be 17 newton once this is 17 newton i can draw the free body here this is 2 kg so 20 newton while the tension here will be 17 newton while this is 5 newton this is 5 newton and the this is n2 acceleration here is 1 meter per second square so now let's see here if this is 17 this is 5 and this acceleration so i can now the the, the, the kinetic friction here kinetic friction is acting so this will be acting over here and this was 10 newton so this is fk2 equal to 10 newton 10 newton that is acting here and you can check very well that the acceleration here should come out to be 1 if suppose i didn't know this so if i try to find out the acceleration of 2 here so this will be 2 2 into acceleration i don't know suppose i don't know so that is 2a2 this will be 17 minus 5 minus 10 10 so that will give me a2 17 minus 15 is 2 17 minus 15 is 2 so a2 will be 2 upon 2 that comes out to be 1 meter per second square everything is okay so what a beautiful uh, problem in which uh, well this is the case what is actually happening in the tug of war game so and you notice that as the tension as the forces on the either sides are changing then how the friction how their direction and the values keep changing i hope you have enjoyed the video thank you very much for watching do subscribe and like my channel thank you very you much the video and want me to make more useful videos for you subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated